So my guest today needs no introduction. He's been on my channel several times. He's been on Vlad TV. He's been on Valuetainment. <clears throat> and he's working on his own uh, projects. And that is uh, Larry Mazza. What's up, Larry? How you doing, man? I'm doing great, John. And as always, I appreciate you inviting me on. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So if anybody is living under a rock and is not interested in watching, uh, you know, two of the biggest podcasts like Valuetainment and Vlad TV, Larry was a former made member of the Colombo crime family. And now he is a gym owner, movie consultant. Um, what the hell else are you doing? You do all kinds of things. Well, <laughs> I could put down author. Uh, I've been in several different TV shows and movies. So, well, mm. not several movies, one movie, but several TV shows. So actors on the resume, a whole bunch of good, positive stuff. Okay, great, great, great. So before we um, started, uh, you have a script that uh, was in the process, but now the strike in Hollywood is is affecting it. Mm -hmm. So why don't you just run down quickly what's going on with that? Well, you know, uh, the the writers went on strike. Uh, you know, what happened was the streaming took over and the whole industry got up, turned upside down where writers used to get, you know, a fair share of the pie. They're not anymore because the streaming companies are just interested in memberships. The more memberships they get, the more money they make. Where mm -hmm. in the old days, there were copyrights and if they showed, uh, you know, actors and writers would get residuals. So what they're doing is fighting for that, to get that back on their plate where they can collect residuals and uh, get a fair piece of the pie. So it did slow it down a little bit, uh, but, you know, uh, Terry is still writing mm -hmm. uh, and he'll be ready when the strike's over to bring it in ethically, uh, first we'll have to have it uh, registered and then go to, you know, the heavyweights. And at the end okay. of the day, like I mentioned to you before, I'm an author of the book, so I'm going to get mm. some writing credit. So whatever they're right. fighting for, God bless them, it's going to help me. Right. And I'm going to play somebody, whether it's a main character or just that middle of the ground character, like uh, Christopher Moltisante in The Sopranos. Right, you know, right, right, right. I could have played that part. You know, it's not... If you're not, you know, you, I wouldn't be acting, just playing. You it would know, just be you, people. yeah. Right. Yeah. Maybe, I, probably a bad example because he was a lot of drugs and that wasn't my thing. But uh, but you get my point. I could play yeah. uh, I just a street guy and it could be a regular character. And then that'll benefit me down the road, too, with residuals. Uh, so I'm excited. Just can't wait for it to all end. And we're finally I'm there, a, I think. I'm excited, too. I hope that this strike um, actually maybe possibly will give Hollywood some more originality and not just produce superhero movies and woke movie bullshit because uh, well, it that is, is just it is just trash and just to just to speak to that it's amazing how Hollywood goes on a full strike and it affects nobody because nobody goes to the movies anyway anymore <laughs> and and this stuff is junk how many spider-mans could you go see I how many I have, I have how many Batmans it's you know it's just Simple script. There's nothing to write. It's comic book material. That's, That's right. why Scorsese was making fun of the movies when they came out. And he insisted on the Irishman uh, being released in the theaters. So yeah. it would be old school. They could win an award. You know, uh, no, I agree with you 100%. But yeah. they're fighting back on the woke stuff. You're starting to get other, oh, other yeah. type of movies out there now that are anti yeah. that. And, and uh, you know, bringing to light some of the argument from the other side. So yeah, yeah. yeah people in general are fighting against the woke stuff, you know, between yeah. Bud Light and, and, yeah. uh, and uh, Walmart. But yeah. the reason why I wanted to have you on was um, you lived through uh, some tremendous times uh, during in New York city, during the seventies, eighties, and into the, into the early nineties. And one of the things that you lived through and took part in, which is absolutely fascinating was, was it, it was the, uh, the Colombo war where they, it was split into two factions. One was Vicarina yeah. and one was the Persicos. And you were on mm -hmm. the Persico side. And I wanted to have you on because I wanted to find out, one, what exactly ignited that? And two, what kind of damage it did to the family or to the mafia in general? Oh, yeah. Well, two, two great questions. Uh, I'll answer the first one. Uh, what started the war? There wasn't one single thing that started it, but the rule that was broken was Vicarina going against his boss, the man that put him there, 
to try to take over the family in a hostile way. Mm-hmm. There's ways a boss can be taken down. Okay. First of all, if he can retire or step down himself. He can do that. He could die. Or he could be voted out unanimously by all the captains. Every single captain has to vote him out. I see. That didn't happen. Vicarina approached the Capos. He even had his uh, consul, yeah, Jimmy Angelina, approach the Capos. And it's really impossible because the minute a man gets a position like that, he makes his best friend the underboss. He makes his cousin and right. his nephew the, the captains. And he makes somebody else that's real tight with him the consul, yeah. So he's surrounding him with people that, you know, maybe one or two have a secret resentment and would love to see him get, you know, but you're not going to get 25 captains to all go against because they're mm-hmm. family. That's right. why it's called family. So Vic tried that. It didn't work. And he listened to other people like John Gotti was a big catalyst because mm-hmm. he had a plan, his own, which we'll talk about. But right. don't stay to answer your question. So when he started approaching the captains, he was making enemies because some of the captains that were loyal to Junior now knew it was on his mind. So they're never going to trust him. Right, 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 right. So now there's friction. See, people don't know all this. The war didn't just, it wasn't one moment that in time that happened. So now these captains were feeling threatened. In a way. Now, Vic Arena was the acting boss, though, correct? He was the acting boss, right. While Junior, Persico was in prison. Right. And, and Persico put him there. Now, you'll hear people say Junior should have stepped down because he had 135 years. That's a – you can have that opinion. Right. But it's – he didn't have to do that. The rules state he's the boss until he dies or steps down. Right. Okay? Or hands. He might have wanted to hand it off to his son, ultimately. That's mm-hmm. why he told Vic, you act. You're the acting boss. But Vic liked the position. And like I said, other people, there were other guys in the family. I'll name a few. Vinny Alloy had a deep resentment for Junior Persico. Mm-hmm. One of the reasons is way back when he was the acting boss and went to prison, he stepped down. Mm-hmm. Again, that was his prerogative. Uh, he didn't have to. You had guys like Nicky Black. Nicky Black would never have risen above soldier. It was put in the night he got straightened out. He would never be more than just a soldier. And there's a reason for that. And the reason is he was a motorcycle cop at one time in his life. Oh, okay. okay? So very short time. I don't know how long, maybe two weeks, maybe whatever. It doesn't even matter. But you can't, that's... Oh, most guys, when that list gets passed around, and they say, oh, no. But what happened, he wound up in a big position in the Teamsters and started making a fortune. Mm-hmm. So as a favor to whoever he was under, I don't really know who it was at the time, let's just say Charlie Moose. Uh, as a favor to Charlie Moose, he got the approval. They made him. But it was a stipulation, you'll never rise above soldier. That's mm-hmm. it. So, So he had a reason to go on Vic's side. Vinny Alloy had a reason. There was a guy in the family named Fat Sal. He owed the Russos, who were first cousins and nieces and nephews, all family, uh, to the Persicos, and he owed them a fortune, like a half a million dollars. And he's paying wow. juice. And he was never going to get out of that. Never, ever, ever. I see. Okay? So he took this as a way out. So what they're doing is divide and conquer. All these guys that had something to gain by Junior Percival not being the boss, sided with Vic. They were mm-hmm. the rebels. Others with aspirations, like Wild Bill Catola. Billy was brought up pretty fast into a big position by Junior Persico and Alley Boy Persico, the son. Mm-hmm. And you would think he would be loyal for that. But, you know, he became capo real quick, a skipper. But now Vic knows he's an ambitious guy. He knows he's got a good crew. He makes him underboss. Okay. So now Billy don't want to lose that underboss position. So he pulled him over. So you could go down the whole list. But right. there's still a bunch of loyal Persico guys 
uh, that were never going to come in. So ultimately, it would lead to a war. Mm. Okay. Now, during this time, uh, uh, you had mentioned Gotti, and Gotti actually mm-hmm. took over the yeah. Gambinos, very, very hostile by the you know murdering um, mm-hmm. uh, Castellano. And there were, I believe, there were two times that the Chin tried to take out Gotti, and it was unsuccessful. Right. Well, I know of one of them. I mean, I, I think it, you know, not that I know firsthand, but the the bombing right was right, right, right. supposed to have John Gotti in the car. And this is how treacherous the life is. Gas pipes crew was responsible for that. They did it right. for the chin. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yet they were up John Gotti's ass while he was on the street. So right, right. there's a lot of that backstabbing and frauds, treachery, you know. So even though he was up Johnny's ass, he was also going to kill him for the chin if he could get away with it. So right. yeah, here, here was John's plan back to all war. When they made Joe Scopo on the boss. Vic made Joe Scopo the underboss. Okay. Joe Scopo and John Gotti grew up from childhood. Very, very uh. close. Very close. So they, if, if Vic would have been the boss, John would have helped Joe take Vic out. Mm-hmm. Joe becomes the boss. Now John and, and his best friend are sitting at the commission. I see. So okay, okay. Boats. Ah, I gotcha. Okay. And it, his whole game plan was to be the next uh, Carlo Gambino, boss of bosses, even though right. I don't even know he really was. But if anybody was the last boss of bosses, it was him. Uh, Carlo I, th- I see. I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But he, if there was, I don't even know that he was really right. considered else's boss at that level. But the, the public seemed to think that. I, I don't know. You know, but that was uh, John's plan to be the head of that commission, have everybody okay. on the uh, goes the, that egotistical, but anyway, I had thought that um, during that time, uh, the chin was sitting at the head of commission, and that's why I brought it up because, well, you you know, there's an elder statesman or there's the most respected, mm. uh, but what I know is the five bosses were all equals, they all sit uh, I, I see, I see, I see. I, I don't know that there's a head of the commission back when Carlo was there. I think the other bosses leaned towards him because he's the old. He was there when the commission was first made. Ah, okay, okay, okay. You know, okay. So I think he just had the, a little bit more of a. Uh, it's like the the knights at a round table; they're all mm-hmm. equal, but the king gets a little bit more. Right, 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 right. Yeah, absolutely. Or, I get it. I get it. The elder statesman, whatever you want to call it, but right. at that table, everybody's equal. Okay. So. Uh, so everybody, you know, there were other people that caused, uh, you know, Vicarina to do what he did. Right. So uh, what I was getting at is that I know um, the Chin was the kind of guy that really stuck to the rules and really believed in Cosa Nostra. And he tried to take Gotti out when he took over the uh, Gambinos and took out Castellano. What do you think would have been the outcome? Do you think that he would have had this? Because then it would have been twice that a boss would be taken well, down if Vic Arena well, would have taken over? If, if, if Vic Arena would have taken over and John would have took him out? No, 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 no. I'm saying what I'm saying is if Vic Arena would have taken over as as uh, mm-hmm. if he won the war and if he would have taken over, right. then that would have been two families that would have been oh, yeah. host, host, yeah. hostile taking overs. And I would love to know what the Chin's response would be because he was a man that was have really supposedly really believed in the rules and the, even the people that he surrounded himself with, like, you know, a guy like Tony Salerno, who uh, was the street boss and went to prison and never said a word. And um, the guys that the old school guys, uh, I, I would love to know what the reaction would have been, because now it's like, oh, well, I could just kill the boss and take over or I could just. That's yeah, where does it end? Right. Once you, you know, that means there's somebody that could just do it to the channel, could do it to uh, the boss of the Bonanno family. Right, right, or, right, right, right. Know, but it, that rule is there to stop that from happening, that stop that egotistical maniac from disrupting the whole setup. Right, you know? right, right, right. So that rule is is being broken is as bad as any other rule being broken. Drugs, right. rat, you name it. It's just as bad for the family itself. Mm-hmm. So, no, I, that's why he, he wouldn't sit back and he wanted John to pay for it. Right. But, you know, uh, it, it, once that's... Okay, and I think you know there was a movie with Armand Desante when he played John Gotti. Oh, the old one, yes, yes, yes. And the 
bit in that, I think it was Uncle Junior from The Sopranos. That's right. That's right. That's he, right. he told him there was a scene and it was so good and so true and, and so educational. He said, Johnny boy, there's a bullet waiting for you now. Right, 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 right. You can do it. Somebody else can do it. And right. that's why, you know, it, it, that approach was against it. Uh, but then some say he might have orchestrated it at his deathbed, knowing John yeah. was going to get yeah. those. But those are all, you know, conspiracy theories. You never know. But no, but he he wanted to take him out for that reason to okay. uh, set an example. He can't was be, there he can't. was there any rumors or echoes or anything about uh, 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 the chin getting involved uh, with with the war because of, because of Icarina is trying to take it over hostile uh, the way he tried to take it over? Well, if he he was very uh, a substantial guy, like you know, and very what's the word uh, looked up to by the other families. And he was 1,000% behind the Percival faction. Right, made, right. It clear, made it 100%, 1,000% clear. No ifs, ands, or buts. The Bonanno family was also 100% behind us. The Lucchese family was sort of split because they were in two factions themselves at the time. They weren't in a shooting war, but a lot of their guys were getting killed. And gas pipe and... And right. little Vic Rova, uh, their little Vic uh, uh, Abuso. Mm -hmm. So the Jersey crew, so they were split up. You know, they, they had their own problems. So some were saying they're back in Vic. Uh, so they weren't. But we had two families. The mm -hmm. Gambino family was totally against us because of what I said to you. Right. But being said, numerous Gambino guys came in on the QT. They came into my pool room. They came into our other clubs. To let us know they're our friends and we're going to continue doing business. Really? Of, yes. Yeah. And some of them I could name because they're not around anymore, like the DeChicos. Really? They came in. Uh, yep. Uh, they made sure. Uh, Tony Morelli, another mm. guy used to come in and see us. Uh, there were a handful, you mm. know. Uh, i trying to think of some of Fra uh, Frankie Fapiano, mm. who was skipping with them later on. Okay. Uh, one of the first guys I was introduced to after I got it. Right, 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 right. right. He was right down the street from us, and he came in every day. And uh, I remember Mikey Scars, if he came in. We didn't see too much of him at the end. He was tight with John Jr., so he probably didn't. Right. Uh, but anyway, there were a whole bunch. So even though openly they were back in Vic Arena, mm -hmm. uh, and there's a, there's a story there, too, why John didn't like Junior Persico, and it's, it's so petty, but they were in prison together. Mm -hmm. And... Junior won't let John sit at his table. Okay, all right. Yeah. And, he, and he never got over it. He yeah, that's ridiculous. That. Yeah, that's yeah. ridiculous. Well, it's, that's, it. that's what you're talking about, ego, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, yeah, some things are just, you know, so. So, so now what, who, so take us through uh, the war a little bit. Who finally hit first where it was like, this is really getting out of hand. Fickering is really obviously trying to take over. Who who hit first? Well, there were a lot of things that happened before the actual shooting started. Mm -hmm. There was what you call a cold war, where messages were being sent back and forth. We went to. I'm sorry, they're doing my lawn out there. I don't know if you can it's hear. Okay, me. don't worry about it. It's fine. Uh, okay, uh, we went to a funeral, and it was uh, the two staff brothers died within months of each other, Johnny and Joe. Mm -hmm. And they were tight, tight, Greg, for a hundred years. So at this meeting, we go in and the, all the original things that happened where Vic Arena told Jimmy to go see the captains, Jimmy Angelina, the council, yeah. Mm -hmm. And when he couldn't get it done, Vic Arena has him killed. And he uh -huh. gets a message. He gets a message to Junior Persico that Jimmy was trying to take over the family. So Junior thinks, oh, my acting boss did the right thing. Oh, but wow. But he lied. And he was the one trying to take over. Right, so right, right. Now, they put Carmine Sessa there, who's real tight with Greg. Mm -hmm. Grew up under him. So he tells Carmine to go see all the captains. He comes to see Greg. Greg starts laughing at him. He says he's going to do the same thing to you mm -hmm. that he did to Jimmy. You're never going right. to get them over. So now he panics, Carmine. He puts a hit team together, obviously a weak hit, hit team. And if he would have 
discussed this with Greg and said that was the way to go. We got to take him out. We'll get a message to Junior. We got to get this guy out. Mm. Okay. And he would have went with Greg. Vic would have been dead. Right. right, okay? right. Now, now Greg, obviously, uh, Greg, you're, you're speaking of Greg Scott, but just to clear Greg it up. Scott, yes. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. But then, then Carmine would have owed Greg again, and he would have felt inferior to Greg because now he was Greg's boss. He was the consulier. Right. He was under. Okay. Yes. But that's again the ego. If I had, if I was in that position, Greg, what do we do? That's what I would ask. Right. Would take, right, right. take him out. Let's and it would be done, no doubt. Okay. Right. Instead, he went with a weak team. They got spotted, and they drove off. Wow. Now, Greg. If he would have got spotted, you know what he would have done? Got out of the car, walked over, and shot him. <laughs> he, got <laughs> yeah. he got spotted. What is that? Oh, they spot, he spotted me. He's going to be dead anyway. Okay. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I mean, it's so, so stupid. So, anyway, they were weak, and that's what happened. Can Garrett, I ask who the weak team was? So, well, Carmine Sessor, uh, uh, one of his, yeah, unfortunately, uh, I, I don't want to name the other two guys. It's okay. I, that's fine. That's fine. I don't want to do that because. Uh, one of them's still alive That's and right. he's around and one of them is, is passed on, but he was a well-liked guy and he was a tough guy, okay. tough guy. I don't blame him. And he did work and I was there with him when work was done. So wow. I didn't meet him much, but the team being led by Carmine and maybe one of the other guys didn't belong there. Okay. So they used to dig in holes, mm -hmm. go dig the hole. And then the, the men will do the work. I That's see. How. Okay. So anyway, now, Carmine, and, and he instructs his guys, all right, we got to go on the land. We got to hide out. He knows we're trying to kill him. Now, Greg told him, you guys look wrong. You look like you did something wrong. Come back. Go about your business. So we we go to this funeral. There's not one Persico guy at the funeral. And the Saps were Persico guys since the 50s. Oh, wow. Okay. And it's really, it's literally me, Greg, and Jimmy. So he there's these the three uh what do you call them? chapels. Mm -hmm. The middle chapel's empty. So after everybody pays their respects, the men go into the middle chapel and Vicarine is making a speech. Mm -hmm. He's saying how they tried to kill him, and whoever doesn't come in are rebels. They have two weeks to come in, or they're dead. Wow. Exactly. If those are his exact words, like they, or they're dead. He looks at the back, points to Greg. I was standing right next to him. He says, we even have Greg Scarper on our side. Oh. He thought we were on our side, right? Right. But the second we left there, we left off that way. Fine. Let him think that. We got right, the call sure. down to who our, who our skipper was, Chucky. And we tell him what just happened. He was a little nervous. I didn't like that. He was like, just kept saying, is that what he said? He's going to kill us? Really? really? I mean, I, you know, I was very unimpressed with that. Because, mm -hmm. again, Greg, you know, uh, laying things out, trying to help, trying to be strong. Mm -hmm. He tells them, you get your cousin Jojo, you get Carmine, you guys get back here. We have to show that we are the family. We're representing Junior Persico and go about your business, like we're the family. So finally, they do come back. And now there's talks going on. The talks are fruitless. Greg tells them, when you go to this meeting, you ask them, will they recognize Junior as the boss? If they say anything but yes, any other answer, you get up and walk out. But again, weakness. That's what a man's man would do. That's what Greg would do. That's what, even though, you know, he turned out to be what he was, he still was, his, you, right. know, you know what I mean? He would have walked out like he said. And if I was sitting there, come on, Larry, up and we're out. Right, 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 right. If they would say yes, now you could make concessions. Now we could discuss, okay, we'll give you number two, Vic. You can be on the boss. Or Joe mm -hmm. Scopo remains on the boss. You know, right, right. you negotiate. You can't give up the kink. Right. Okay. So now again, there's a lot of weakness. Like Teddy's brother. Oh, I'm sorry. Junior's brother, Teddy. Not the son. The son's mm -hmm. a gangster all the way. The father was really not. 
Okay, he was he had no right being elevated to skipper, but Ted uh, Vicarina did that, thinking Junior would like that. Oh, he made my brother. The first mm. thing he said when he heard that, he says, "Why'd you make him a captain?" I mean, he really, didn't, yeah, he he's not he's a very simple minded guy. He's not mm-hmm. sharp. He's pretty smart. Uh, I want to say he was like a, a plumber or something in his earlier years, right? Uh, you know, so he wasn't a street guy. But a lot of times he was the one bringing the messages back. Mm-hmm. And I remember Greg hearing the messages from Teddy and like shaking his head. He says, there's no way that's the message that came from Junior. Junior did not say continue negotiating or try to make peace. Once they say they will never, ever re- recognize Junior as the boss, mm-hmm. his message is going to come back and take them all out. Or right. something like he's not right. going to answer. So he knew. So the messages were coming back. And a lot of that caused this to really become a full blown war. It, mm-hmm. it probably didn't have to. Uh, so now uh, there's a, there's things that happen. Like Joe Sapp, when he died, he left a big number operation, big, like 300,000 a week. Mm-hmm. So they claimed it. But Greg says, oh, no, Joey was with me since 1962. That's my right. business. My partner's in that business. So they call us to a meeting at Wild Bill's Club. Okay. So it's a Thursday night to discuss this situation. There's a little bit more detail which led up to that, but it doesn't matter. We go to this meeting. We turn the, I turn the corner. I'm in the car with a friend Joe. The middle car is Jimmy and Greg, and there's a third car in the back with three of our heavyweights. Literally, the big guys. Yeah, <laughs> so they needed a big Lincoln for themselves. So we turned. I turned the corner, and I remember saying to myself, "I, I can't stop," because there was literally a hundred guys, a hundred guys lining the streets. Wow! But I knew, and this is documented in court trans. I mean, it's, I'm not exaggerating. Guys yeah. on roofs with gun, rifles, a guy with a with a gun like this behind Billy's Lincoln. But I knew. If I didn't pull in and I would have drove off, Greg would have never let me live that down. Right, right. right. He would have told me, don't you ever show that one weakness like that. We right, right, right. We go. Now, I'm looking at our guys. We're all 28, 29. We have kids. We have families. So I'm thinking some line of safety. I don't want to walk into an ambush. Right. But you know what? I pulled right in. Got okay. out of the car. I said, Greg's here to see Billy. First guy comes running up to me is a guy they called Chicky, and he's got a gun out, and he's pointing it at me. He says, put your hands on the car. I said, am I under arrest? That was good because he laughed. I laughed, and I, and I said, we're here to see Greg. We're here yeah, for me. Right, right. So everybody sort of calmed down a little bit. They're yelling, where is he? Where's Greg? Finally, he gets out of the car. They walk him in. He's in there for two hours. Mamma mia. Okay. If that was the other way around, there's a good chance the guy would have never walked out. Right, so it would have been right. the opportunity right there. But he gave he he made a speech, told them what they're doing is wrong. Mm-hmm. Junior to put you all where you are today. And it's not the way the rules of this thing were set up. Just he Junior's your boss. So now when we left there, that's the first time they knew hundred percent we were on the other side. So even even Greg tried to so they should talk. Have talked, even Greg tried to talk some sense yeah. into them. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Other guys, uh, other guys. <laughs> you know, there was a guy down in Florida. Uh, well, his name's Ren. They uh, they called him up there, and he because he was a skipper in Florida. Mm. He came. He walked into Billy's club. Same thing. They tried to get him to come over, and he said, "None of you in a position to do that. Nobody took Junior down." No acting, no no commission, nothing. He's right. still the boy. It's not yours to give up. And he walked out and, and let them know if anything happens to to the son, you better take me out too. He right. declared his loyalty. Right. Other we had we had a, we had some good solid people on our side. Right, right, right. What right. was left of it. So now that looked a little weak because. Now, they weren't supposed to be doing business with us, paying us, but now we got the number business. About a week later, something else happens. Another guy dies. And this other guy, uh, Joe Beard, comes to the club, and he tells us uh, they want me to give them the numbers. 
He says, tell, and it was Fat Sal, tell Fat Sal, the numbers are ours, and I'll be at the candy store tomorrow if you want to discuss it. Or, or, no, no. And I'll come to the candy store with you tomorrow and see if Sal shows up. We where, don't if, know where, we're where was the candy store, if you don't mind me asking? Fort Hamilton Parkway. It's called Snaps. Okay, okay, okay. Fort Hamilton okay. Parkway. All right. So now I'm standing in front of the door with Jimmy. Greg is inside with this Joe Beard, another friend, Richie. And uh, I think that was it. I seen a big white Lincoln pull up. That's how had a big white Lincoln. Mm. As he's pulling up, I open the door. I see Greg, he's pulling up. So we're going to talk outside. So well, Greg would end up probably taking a walk. So Greg comes out. He comes walking out the door. The guy hits the gas and drives off. Wow. He didn't even come. Yeah, he, now, we stopped when it was seven guys against 100. Here we were seven guys. They had four guys in the car, you know, and they, they drove off. They were scared. So these little things were starting to irritate some of the guys that were catalysts on their side, you know, mm. showing weakness. They had to make a move. And that's when they made that initial move on Greg. And at the same time, a lot of people don't notice, they took something out of the Godfather. The same day they tried to kill Greg, a black guy was paid 10000 to stab Greg Jr. in Lewisburg. Really? Tried to kill him. Yes. And guess who's in Lewisburg with, with Greg Jr.? Ralph, uh, Ralph Scopo, Joey's father. Wow, really? Yeah. So they, because they knew if they killed Greg and Gregory comes home someday, you know. Yeah, right. right. And at that time, he was coming home. He still had a, uh, a, a an old law 20, 20 year sentence where he would have been home in 11. He was down, you know, maybe had another four or five left. He was in for right. that seven. Uh, but then he got hit with compounded things after that, of course, when he fell apart. So all of those things, you know, then when they tried for Greg, we wanted to retaliate. Carmine was still saying, no, we got to talk. The chin doesn't want an all-out war, this and that. And even at that point, Greg was saying, tell them all to mind their business. The right. chin, I tell them to mind their business. Our problem, we have to up and then they killed Hank the Bank, one of our guys. So now I didn't like, I remember saying to Greg and Carmine, if we don't start shooting back, we're just going to get taken out one at a time. Right, because they they gonna they got to know that we're looking for them too. I said I don't like being the hunted one. You know, how old were you during this time? About about uh, twenty twenty seven, twenty eight. Yeah, so you were full of piss and vinegar at this point. Well, but no, but I was I was now coming of age. Is right, the way I would put it, because okay, you know that whole first time I wasn't that important of a guy other than being Greg's right hand man, which was important. Right, but there was no issues. You know, everything was under control. If I had a beef with Skipper, Greg would talk for me. Right. Uh, I never really went to him, but when he would hear of something, he'd come. You know, I didn't like running to, to anybody. So, was that the tipping point, the Greg and Greg uh, Jr. Uh, hit? Was that the tipping point where it was like, okay. Oh, that, we knew it was going to be a war, but we still listened. Okay. That's what I'm saying. But once Hank got shot, and I said that, Greg looked at Carmine. And let me go back to what I was saying now. I said, I'm 28, 29, okay, because I was in prison by 30, so it was only another year that went by. Right. And I felt part of this now. You know, and I thought my – I was always able to talk to Greg. So I said, I think we need to we need to do something, Greg. Otherwise, we're just going to be hunted. Right. He looked at Carmine and he said, he's right. We got to show them that we're ready to fight. You know, bring the fight to them. And Carmine finally agreed. Finally. Now, th now this is Carmine Sessa? Yeah. Okay. Carmine Sessa. And Greg looked at the men in the room, and I remember he said this, it's open season. <laughs> so now we went back, and we had the first shootout where we, we shot Flimsy in the foot. Or no, we, we shot Joe Tolino, Mickey Black's nephew, got hit in the foot. Uh, Amato, the guy Amato got killed. He was standing in the door. We thought he was one of uh, Vic's guys. But it wound up being a chin guy. Mm -hmm. A chin oh. may, may die in a chin man. Wow. But this is another funny thing. So, but now we answered. So they knew we're coming back. So they had to close up their clubs and, and hide out. Carmine Sessa, another sign of weakness. When he heard that we shot a guy in the chin's family, he calls this emergency meeting. He comes <clears throat> and we told him what happened. He fainted in my arms. I had to the fuck out of here. 
Because you know the shit. Us. When he came through, Greg says, look, he's a big boy. He shouldn't have been there. We right. did nothing. Message came back from the chin. You know what it was? Wow. He was a big boy. He should have been there. <laughs> it's almost like they discussed it. I it's, see, it's, I have interviewed oh, you. Oh. I've been, I've interviewed you. I've interviewed Rita. I've seen documentaries. It seems as though the chin's power in New York city during the eighties was, it seems like it was next to none because it seems, it seems like everybody feared him. And, 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 um, and Michael Frances talks about it. And then, yeah. Uh, Gotti would not retaliate when they blew it, when they tried to bomb the car. So it yeah. seems no, listen, he had a ton of respect. He he had a ton of respect. Uh, you know, he had a good, the, the family was operating the right way. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, they didn't run around introducing people when they got made. You know, you're not supposed to do that. Right. Uh, there's a time and place. They were very secretive. They were very smart. They were ahead of the curve. The government right, right. Come after the, the so, so I'll give him all of that, but no, he had a ton of respect. But okay. you know, so did Junior Persico. He's still the longest yeah. tenured boss. He was the longest. He had a um, a lot of respect. You know, right, right, uh, right, right. you know the, the Bananos had that up and down because Joe Banano and they always was sort of they were off the commission for years. The right. Lucchese, you know, up until Gas Pipe and Amato, not that they didn't have respect, they were more feared because he was a lunatic. Right, uh, not that respect of a man in a position leading men that's ready to kill if he has to. You know, it's a little uh, different with certain guys. And John, you know, John had respect; people respected him too. Uh, but the the guys like Junior and the Chin would never look at him as an equal for the way he did what he did. I say, I say, I say. So now this is an all-out war, and. Uh, how did it affect business and um, and and money coming in and so on and so forth? Well, it's funny you say that because we tried to keep our sports business going and, you know, our, even our Shylock businesses. People were afraid to come by the club to pay us. So we would have to go around looking for people. And, you know, they, they don't answer their doors or uh, it got very difficult. But here's the sickening part. We didn't get this much of a break during the war with finances. We had to pay our juice weekly, even though they knew we weren't collecting from people. Ah, uh, okay. They didn't so, give a shit. Yeah, yeah. That was, that's just another one of those treacherous things that you you, you, you can never forget. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Free, uh, you know, real scumbags, things to do to people that are out there fighting for you. Right. You know, not one inch did we get. Uh, as a matter of fact, they tell us one minute, hey, be careful on 11th Avenue. Billy's crew was over there. But if you know how to go to 11th Avenue, right directly across the street to collect the payment, or make sure you go get that money. Right, right. Oh, right, but right, right. Billy's across the street. I have to worry about him today. Right, you know? right, right. So it's, it's, it's a lot of all the fakeness comes out mm. and weakness. People start running away. Guys that are you supposed to respect all these years, and they, and they go hiding out and they're running, hiding in Atlantic Highlands, hiding in Manhattan. Who went to Atlantic City? Who went to Italy, Vegas? You know, it was, it was ridiculous. It was, right. and you know, a few guys are staying back and shooting it out every day, you know, from both sides. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it was only a few. There was only a few real yeah. hardcore yeah. guys, and you and you were on that one side. And we were, uh, but no, business took a hit. Uh, and I don't think, I don't think it's ever going to be the same again. No, definitely not the Colombo family, especially mm -hmm. you know. Like they, they they've scraped the bottom of the barrel for some of the guys that have from positions, right? Guys that never held a gun in there, guys that were, you know, junkies on Avenue X, uh, degenerate gamblers, guys on Avenue U, Thirteenth Avenue. Where were they during the war? Is my question. And right. now I hear about now, now they're like uh, this made guys. And they want to talk bad about me or Jimmy or somebody, you know. But where were they when they were needed? Right. You know? Right. 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 Uh, so. We proved the army, and um, ultimately, you know, when the whole thing fell apart, and all guys started, you know, flipping and found out about Greg and that Junior and his son knew about it for twenty years that Greg was bad, and uh, you know, it becomes a business decision. So you just gotta, you know, get escape. Right, 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 right. So now, when the when the when the when the war's over. If if you want to say that, right? Um, Persico finally 
prevails. What kind of damage did it have that to take on the family or the or the cause of in New York City in general? Well, I just part of my last comments were that they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. All the good guys are dead, flipped, you know, doing time, uh, retired and left. There's guys that just left. They're down in Florida because they don't want to be part of that life anymore. Mm-hmm. You know, still, mm-hmm. still, may, I run into them sometimes. Uh, so now you have a, a weaker leadership. It was weakening. Now it's a real weak leadership. You have still guys that fought a war that you can't tell me trust each other now 100%. You can't tell me, you know, uh, I'll just throw two names, you know, Teddy Persico and Joe Waverly, who both just came home recently, and I think one of them went back in, uh, are going to trust each other 100%. Right. right, It's like they put back together when I was in prison and I heard Billy Toller got killed. I wasn't shocked. One of the things Greg told me, he'll never, ever, ever uh, be forgiven for what he did. Never. Right. Billy, Vinnie Lloyd, Victorina, those guys never be forgiven right, uh, right, right. by the person who goes. So ultimately, Billy gets killed. Joe Scopo gets killed while I'm in. The war's supposedly over. Uh, but I think the Joe Scopo thing really ended it. All right, that's it. They had no leadership anymore. Vic was in jail. Joey's dead. Billy is dead. So they just put it back together. But uh, it will never be the same because I understand, too, which is a good thing, they don't want to kill anymore. No more killing. There's right. been a, okay, which is good, but it should have never gotten so easy to kill. There was a time where you had to go through channels, and you know, it was a bigger deal. Then mm. all of a sudden, we, we became like cowboys and Indians, just right, guys, right, right, right. And right, even without the war, like uh, gas pipes crew and John, what he was doing, uh, you know, just it, it became mayhem. So right. it's too easy. But now, what do you base the trust on? What do you how, base? How much did the feds come down on you during during this time? You know, because I remember when uh, you know, because I was I was living, I would move to Staten Island when I was fourteen, so I was kind of I was in it was it was like it was going on when I was living in Benson Hurston and moved to Staten Island, and I mean I remember I remember the, the the shootings and so on and so forth. But I also remember a lot of arrests. How bad How bad did the feds come down and really hit hard? Well, yeah, once they put the task force together, you know, the feds came in to help the New York uh, state, they put a lot of pressure on. They had, mm-hmm. you know, they were doing a lot of surveillance. They were doing pullovers, catching guys with guns, arresting them. They were subpoenaing people to come in and talk on the oath. Uh, so it, it, and that's where, that's, you know, where the other families didn't want all this to happen. For that right. reason, for us, uh, but no, it it started the beginning of the end. It started the beginning of the end. I you know, I, I call it the water end all wars. Right, right, right. You right, know, right. Uh, and it didn't. It really didn't need to be. It didn't have to happen. But you know, egos and uh, greed. It sounds. It sounds to me like <clears throat> I don't know. It sounds to me. I mean, I don't know. You tell me. It sounds to me that Vic Arena wasn't the sharpest tool in the shed. Uh, because if people tried to talk him out of it, and if he thought that, you know, during a time when it was very powerful during the 80s, that people were just going to sit back and, and let him take over, um, especially after the Gotti situation with Castellano, I, I would have to think that he didn't really play this out too well in his head. Is that accurate? Well, you know, I, I think he was a smart guy. He was very successful in business. But he was put into this position. And I remember Greg telling me he didn't put a strong enough guy in that position, Junior mm-hmm. Persico. He put a, a guy that he he knew he could control. Ah, I see. Like a puppet. But, okay. And exactly. He says, I think he might have used that word. He says, but other people controlled him too. Mm. So it wasn't that he was not a smart man. And I think he... He sucked it all in. He started liking the power, liking being the big, the big guy. It's a high, and sure. That made it easier to, to these people misleading him. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, he's yours forever. Have the, you know, so I think it was more weakness than uh, stupidity. I think it was weakness. And when I ran into him in prison, 
and, and I walked on the floor. He came over with a couple of other guys, other family, uh, Frankie Lasterino, Mike DeSantis. And I remember him apologizing to me. He says, I want to, yeah, I want to tell you how sorry I am. I feel really? so responsible for everything that happened. He, and yeah. And then, but after he said that, he, he looks at me and says, but I wish I had you guys on my side. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame him. <laughs> I told him and I told him this, you could take this verbatim. I said, Vic, I was with Greg. That was my boss, as you know. Wherever he went, I went. I said, if he would have backed you, there would have been a lot of dead person goes today. Right. right, he, backed, right. he stayed with Junior and I had to stay there. Right, 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 right. But he, he understood. He says, you're right. And uh, But he did apologize and, and took responsibility for, for starting this, you know, causing the war. Right, 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 right. Well, you can't, you know, unfortunately, an apology can only go so far because it yeah. really destroyed things, you know, it really, really. Yeah, I, mean, I it, it didn't matter. I didn't, you know, expect an apology from him, you know. Yeah. It is what it is. It's, we were all big boys, you know. But he, uh, I, I thought it was a nice gesture to, you know, say we went about it wrong. And, I, and it's, it's my fault, you know. Yeah, right, 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 right. He only had to answer one person in the whole world, Junior Right. That's right. it. Ah, well, Larry, I just, you know, I really want to thank you uh, for coming back. And and it's always a great, uh, it's always a great discussion, man. It, it, it truly is. So besides the... Um, the uh, TV series that hopefully the, uh, that you have coming up, are uh, you working on anything else? You're still a gym owner, obviously, right? The gym, and we've done great things to the gym. We have an outdoor section okay. covered with those big uh, parasite type of things. Yeah. And uh, we got the battle ropes outside. We've got equipment outside, tires, we've got weights out there. So, you know, it's a little too hot this time of the year, but people still go out there. So the gym is fantastic. It's doing great, thank God. Uh, we put the we put my talk show on hold only because Terry started writing the script. Oh, so that's said, see, it's it's unbelievable how it's affecting yeah, everything. Go ahead. Yeah, said, no, because if when he's writing it, you know, let's say HBO loves it and expedites it, I can't be in the middle of filming talk shows, which were fun and I enjoy them. I think a lot of people enjoy watching them. Right. Uh, and it was starting to build, but we said, let's wait and see what happens, because this is the, the goal, to get this book to be a series. Sure. You know, so we put that on hold, and we're going to see if it, if we feel it's going to take, like, another six months or something, we may do another se another season. Okay. Uh, and I have a great group of guests. I'm going to have uh, Rita Giganti on. Yeah, she's one. fantastic. I'm, yeah. I'm going to have a guy, Lawrence Roller, uh, Larry Roller, who was uh, probably the most prominent race fixer in harness racing history really and i remember his name because i was into harness racing he was really? a little bit known but i was learning about the horses and i remember larry roller up at monticello you wow. know but he was a big time fixer and, and and it becomes a mob story because once the mob heard you know what they want yeah they right want right it. yeah That's yeah, yeah. Story. Uh, i got a whole long list there's a girl in my neighborhood uh that her father was named uh, nicknamed Joe Jelly mm. from Heaven to He gets killed. It's a mystery from many, many years ago. And uh, she started researching about her father because she was a little girl. And he's a was a serious, serious guy, like Sally mm. D'Ambrosio and Mimi, those type of guys, really mm -hmm. feared, uh, a little crazy and tough. Uh, but we're going to talk about that murder and who did it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know, so we had a good and, and so many more. I've got about 12 to 15 people. Uh, we'll probably only do 10 of them, but uh, and we just got to wait on this thing. If we know we're going to have time, we'll do it, but we don't want to be in the middle of it and have my mind, oh, Terry needs me, you know, right, or, right, or, right, 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 maybe filming something, right, you know. Now, now the show is on Plex TV, Plex TV, and uh, one of the substation, if you go down the list, you'll see all the different stations like. Comedy TV, news TV, blah, 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 blah. And you'll see mom TV. And mom then uh, TV. you scroll. I'm still on, but it's only the two seasons. And we should yeah, have the so third season. You could still see the, the 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 reruns of the two seasons on there. Yeah. It's on yeah. Plex TV. Okay. You go to Plex TV and then you scroll down to go to Mob TV. And yeah. what's the actual show called? The Life. 
with Larry the, the life of Matt Larry Maz. I've watched several of them. I've watched the the uh, Cotolo Jr. one. I've watched the uh, uh, Frankie Steele. Uh, Frankie, Frankie Steele, yes, yeah. and Steel yeah, show. yeah, Frankie Steele is great. And uh, and I also watched uh, Joey Miami, which was a great one. Yeah, good. All right, yes. Cool. So it, it, that is it is really interesting to um, get a, a real perspective from people that really live through the through this life instead of watching you know a documentary or or a movie of you yeah. know you know so it's a, it's a tremendous show so I really recommend people watch I also recommend people read your book the life which actually I've read I have it uh, when you first came on I bought it and I read it it is a tremendous read because your your break into Cosa Nostra was not like anybody else's it was a completely right. different story i'm not going to give anything away uh well obviously if anybody saw your interview with me or with vlad tv or value team yeah. you know the story but there's a lot more detail involved in the book and uh, you can get the book on amazon and you have a website well, too right? website www.larrymazza-thelife.com okay uh they get a, a signed copy and uh you'll get all the pictures if you get it on kindle and amazon they don't show the pictures. I see. I see. Okay. Yeah, uh, Larry, once again, all, all the respect in the world. Much love always. Jim, I'm sure I'll be on again and Definitely. stay in touch. Thank you, all sir. Right. I'll talk to you soon. Yeah, you got Bye-bye. it. Bye-bye.